Hi guys and welcome back. I always tell you guys that my guests are going to be amazing and I, it proves it right here with the interviews. It always goes swimmingly and I love when guests are very, very open with me. It just makes everything so much better. Now we are going to switch gears to an amazing person alongside in the film industry. Now he has a great resume. He's a lot of training. He's got a lot to talk about. So everyone, please welcome actor, filmmaker, producer, writer, Michael Forsh. Hi, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you're a hugger. Sure. Might as well. Please be. take a seat. Okay. Welcome to the hot seat. I'm used to being in that chair. Yeah, I was going to say, chair, everyone's probably used to being here. Now they're like, oh my god. <laughs> Is this just what it's like? Like, oh my goodness. I'm in the interview seat. Well, I don't, right. I'm not usually an interviewer, but I'm used to being in the director. You want to tell people what's going yeah. But amazing. So I'm glad to have you here. I'm glad that you're willing to not sit in this chair today, <laughs> just for a little bit. But first things first is that you've been kind of doing this for a while. And what is impressive to me is that you kind of started on the stage. I did. Theater being mentored by, you know, Broadway performers and in the dance world. So tell me a little bit about your journey, where you're from, what was the beginning like for you? Well, I'm all about honesty, so I do, I will get into that, but I actually got my start doing uh, TV film as a kid, doing ah, shows like Wonder Years and 30 something. And then I stopped doing that as I got a little bit older, and then I got bit by the um, the, the theater mm -hmm. bug. So like 15, 16, I started doing musical theater, and I just didn't stop. And I went from there to being a professional dancer at mm -hmm. 18, and I basically um, worked as a professional dancer for the next um, like 15 years that's or so. Amazing. Yeah, and that's what that's what ended up bringing me to Las Vegas. Actually, yeah. was being on stage on the Las Vegas Strip. Right. That's yeah. every performer's dream, whether they're a circ performer, they're acrobat, or they did theater and they want to keep up the, you know, thing going. And it's amazing because my life started in theater. I won't say as well, but I understand what the, the hustle is like yeah. being a performer and having that type of schedule and where to next, you know, the hopping and who do I need to know and being what theater likes. And so you kind of were in the musicals. Like, what was your main primary type of dance? Contemporary, jazz, Shh. jazz? So I started out actually as like a commercial dancer, like doing like hip hop and stuff, but in the 90s. So it was a very different style back mm -hmm. then. And um, I actually ended up getting, uh, I was performing in a community show somewhere out for something. I don't know, something like a fair or mm -hmm. something, we'll call it that. And a ballet teacher saw me and was like, that guy can actually dance, which at the time was a little rare. There's more male dancers now, but not as many as there should be. And he was, she was like, hey, um, Aaron Holt, she's an amazing ballet teacher. If you're in California sometime, go check out her studio. She's a really nice lady. Mm -hmm. um, she took me under her wing and started training me in classical dance. So ballet and some jazz and stuff like that. And so I started kind of on this one side and then I went on the other and I have a, a huge love for both styles of commercial dance, mm -hmm. ballet, musical theater, jazz. That's like kind of what I morphed into as a professional. Yeah, what was it about dancing and pushing your limits that really kept you going with it for so long? It's, it's one of those things where like you don't realize how much you love something until it almost gets taken away. Um, I was a pre-professional, pre but I was training a lot at the time. And I hurt my back and um, pretty bad and I had to do some rehab doing Pilates and stuff and and the doctors are like oh you might you might have to stop dancing and I was like I can't I love it too much I'm super mm. passionate and I brought that passion to bring that passion and love for the arts I kind of just really fell in love with the arts as a dancer and and that type of work ethic and mindset that you have to have to be a professional dancer is not as glamorous as being an actor or singer yeah maybe you don't you don't get noticed or you're kind of like filling up the stage as much yeah. although there's more more emphasis on the dancers now with like so you think you can dance and all that so the dancers are well known but a lot of times the focus of the show is on the singer or the actor or whatever and the dancers are kind of supporting so to have that mindset of like how hard you have to work um, really helped me in the rest mm -hmm. of my career well, that's absolutely amazing so what show brought you to Vegas so there's actually a show called shag with a twist um, it premiered in LA and they decided to bring it to Las Vegas mm -hmm. and I had done it in 
Las uh, L.A. originally, uh, it was like the original cast, yeah. as part of the original cast, and I helped um, uh, bring it bring it here to Las mm-hmm. Vegas. So I moved here um, in 2006. I had no idea what it was like to be in Las Vegas, and I was yeah. like, "Oh, I'll be here for six months." And then, uh, <laughs> 15 years yeah. later, here we are. Or set, what is it, like 18 years? I don't know, something like that. Yeah. So, uh, Shag with a Twist, that show lasted for about a year and a half. And then I went into uh, a very famous show, which everybody knows uh, is Jubilee, which sadly closed mm-hmm. in 2016. But I was in Jubilee for seven years, from 2007 yeah. to 2014. Yeah, the biggest show. Everyone who was anyone, especially a lot of showgirls, Jubilee is like the show Yeah. when it was a thing. But I think the things that you're pinpointing is what it's like to be in the prime of a sport as an athlete. Mm-hmm. Dancers are no less athletes than the NFL or anything else. And having that mindset of like any little thing, even me performing, when I go out on stage, something can happen. And like, that's it. So what do you do? Yeah. Right? But what's great about you is that you also started kind of in film. You dabbled in both. Where I like learned that I started with only stage training, like, you know, degree, all that stuff. And then flipping the switch and trying to go into film and television. And I would love to hear how you kind of went back because every day the film industry changes. I mean, everything, entertainment in general, stage, film, but after doing this and you're getting you know settled in what it's like to be a performer a stage performer and then switching gears to film television commercial it's totally different and people don't understand what the difference is but what was that like for you so i finished my dance career and i kind of looked around and i was like okay so what's next and i had the um amazing Uh, opportunity to audition and be cast in a feature film. It was my first feature film uh, with the Mahal Empire, uh, Mahal Brothers, Michael and Sonny, uh, a film called Last Day of School. And I um, had done like maybe two other film projects and but that really was like, oh, this kind of rekindled something in me Mm -hmm. as 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 a performer. And I was like, I really, really enjoy being on set. And it kind of, I just got bit by this bug of back, back as being a film actor. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, this is it. I'm, I'm doing this. And so from there, I, you know, s- s- consistently working short films, feature films, whatever. Um, to, <laughs> there's a lot of films. I don't want to, it's like I could go forever and we don't have the time. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. Uh, so from there, I was like, you know, indie film is so different from Hollywood. The films that I were, the, and the shows and stuff that I did in LA is, is way different. It's a way different feel for being in the indie film. And I actually really enjoy it because there's a lot more um, improvisation, problem solving, and just trying to make do with what you have around and what yeah. you can do. So like the budgets are never as high. You never have a full crew. You know, you're always dealing with time limits and different things and so I was like you know I have stories that I want to tell and no one's going to make these stories <laughs> unless it's me so mm-hmm. I started out with my um, writing and directing partner and we produced our first film um, called Burrow which actually ended up winning uh, best short film at the Hollywood Dreams International Film Festival and that sort of was like oh my god we can do this so since then um, you know fully on the production side as well as the acting side and just kind of on both sides of the camera I've spent the last like six seven eight years doing that that's so. amazing that you've been doing it here in Las Vegas so yes you're being absolutely. a big contribution to the film industry that's absolutely. building in which I love and there's only a couple of people that I've met or heard of that prefer indie over the big Hollywood feature, the, you know, the mainstream, like the celebrity. And I always find it interesting because everyone has a different reason as to why. Right. Right? Because they feel like indie really touches base in a deeper way with less stigma that they have to live up to, right? right. That they can really just have more, a little bit of freedom. If they want to go in a darker direction, they can. It's just, I, I've heard different reasons and it's the grit of indie that mm-hmm. really attracts a lot of people and a lot of those people end up being writers and they end up being people that are creatives and really contribute in their own area of film and I, yeah i mean it comes down to creative freedom and don't get me wrong if hollywood comes knocking yeah, on my door right. there's no <laughs> way i'm saying no because exactly. 
you know, having an unlimited budget or a huge budget really is a cool thing. Yeah. Like it's such a cool experience to be able to walk on set and not be worried like, you know, oh my gosh, are we going to have enough money to, uh, you know, finish the film or who, who's going to pay for post-production that it's all done. Like I would love, absolutely love to work with a studio. However, creative freedom, being able to do the stories that I want to do without input from somebody be like, well, no, because you can't say this or you can't do that because of specific sponsorships yeah. or our algorithm says that exactly. you should be doing this or that. I can just tell my story and hopefully I've researched enough to know that the story that I want to tell is going to sell and make money. That's a whole other thing. But yeah. uh, creative freedom is a, is a huge thing mm -hmm. on the indie side. And there's there's a, so many huge uh, independent directors that now have come over to the uh, the studio side that have, have been hugely successful because if they develop their own point of view and their own way of telling story that really resonates mm -hmm. with the studio audiences. So what motivates you to write and create? What's that story in you where you want to be like, this is what I see in my films? Oh man, I just, I, what motivates me, I wake up in the morning and I just, I have, I just want, I just, I'm doing it. I'm just doing mm -hmm. whatever is the next step on whatever project I'm on. Like I'm so passionate about it that I, I just love doing it and I put everything I can into into the work, into the filmmaking, and whether that's pitching my next project, writing the next script, tracking down the composer to finish the score. Like, I'm just all over the place, just like constantly checking with people, trying to be the engine that drives everything together. And it's, I think that's innately, it, like just a part of my personality. Yeah. Like I, I'm always, I've always been a good self motivator. I've never needed somebody to be like, okay, you gotta do this now. I'm like, yep let's go we're doing it let's make something happen uh and I, I think that for me that does come from being a dancer and and just d doing the hard work yeah. and so like i i bring that mentality of i'm willing to put in the hours and the time and and you know grit my teeth and sink my teeth in and not let go and and see it through to the end which is a very difficult thing and that's why a lot of people don't end up finishing their projects or something because adversity gets in the way and mm. then they kind of just lose track or they get distracted or family or blah, yeah. blah 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 so I think if you know if I had two superpowers it would be tenacity and patience yeah and discipline and I think that's what I'm getting a lot with you is discipline and holding yourself accountable yeah. for something that you started and, and there's a lot of people that lack that which is interesting because in this industry entertainment in general you need a lot of it because you don't have set hours most of the time. You go home and yep. you continue to work. So yep. it's up to you to continue to work because no one's going to breathe down your neck you're either going to do it or you're not, right? And it's kind of like, well, now you have to live with not finishing a project, um, telling people about the project, not saying, okay, it didn't finish, right? right? And that's absolutely just across the board amazing. And I love actors like you that share that without me having to ask those things because it kind of shows what drives you to continue to wake up every day and say, no, this is what I am, this is what I'm doing. So going along that, what do you want to be known for? What is your legacy? Ah, that's a good, uh, just, just a, you know, an artist in the performance arts, like across the boards. Mm -hmm. um, I love doing all of it. I, I like to say that um, as much as I love producing, uh, you know, especially my own projects and stuff, if I could literally just be on set and know my lines and, and be in front of the camera and do that, like, I feel like that's my happiest place. But uh, at the same time, I say that and I know it's a freaking lie because I can't help myself. I'm on set and I see like problems that need solving and stuff and I'm just like, I know how I do this, but it's not my job. So right. I'm going to sit here and wait for my turn to do my stuff. But exactly. I, I kind of see see it all, and I I want I I'm very motivated to help in and do a million things, but I do take it very seriously when I'm on set, unless it's my own production that I'm producing, directing, yeah. and acting in. I tr I take that role as an actor very seriously, and I'm like I might suggest something to the director, but there's you know I'm very careful not to step on people's toes. So hard answer I would have to say um, it's still a three way tie I'd say actor, director, producer probably in that order final answer
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's great, though. You know, everyone has a different type of legacy they want to leave, a different type of mark they want to put. Um, some people don't want to continue for a long time. They're here for a short time. You know, they want to gig, and that's it. But I like, because you're passionate about it, you want to contribute being a presence always. And, and I understand what you're saying. A lot of people don't know the boundaries of knowing your place of what your role is that day. Yeah. Right. At, outside of this, we could be so many different things. Oh, I do this, I do that. And but you know, in film, everyone has their ego, right? Mm -hmm. But who am I right now? This is the hat I have to be in. So if it comes to like my role, yes, let's talk about it. But if not, you're just sitting there biting your tongue. Like I didn't see it. I didn't. <laughs> you're like I don't. I what? I don't know. I don't know. Don't know. You know, not to put yourself in the hot seat. No pun intended. Hey. But you know. But I I love that for you, and I love how. It shows, and I tell people this, how much coming from the stage world, the theater world, that, you know, show to show to show, when you're younger and you're more in your more training years, when everything's very, very, you're acclimating to this industry, how it carries on with how you handle yourself, switching gears. Yeah, you know, people get taken away by the lights and the cameras and stardom and Hollywood that they forget what is the purpose, what is the job. What is the craft? And you really keep that really strong within you. And you're like, this is what it is, and I'm going to hold on to the discipline, the work ethic. The what it takes to do this type of job isn't to just wake up and say, I'm a star. It, it's a lot of people. It's a lot of hands. It's a lot of things that go into play that when people watch th movies like Marvel, they don't see those. They don't appreciate every single body on the set and in the room. So I applaud you for all the things that you're, you're doing and you're con contributing to film. Now, the whole thing a word about Las Vegas is that, you know, it's a second Hollywood, right? And you've been here for a little bit, longer than I have. How have you viewed how the Las Vegas film industry is progressing? Um, that's a very good question. So, Las Vegas does have some issues with, um, be, it's positive and negative with Los Angeles being so close. Um, there's a lot of, like, Los Angeles comes over here a lot to film mm -hmm. and do lots of projects, uh, uh, but they're not always necessarily using all of Las Vegas talent. Yeah. And I understand, I get it, as a casting director and a director, I fully understand why they bring in talent from L.A. or from New York or mm -hmm. from whatever, because literally, L.A. and New York is such a huge market and they have the best actors in the world. They have... There, there is unbelievably talented, but I would love to challenge LA uh, producers and filmmakers to give Las Vegas talent, crew, and actors and everything else the opportunity to at least audition for these roles. Maybe we're not auditioning for the lead or supporting, but give us a chance to do the day player role or the under five line or anything. It, it does happen, it does. Mm -hmm. But could it happen more? Absolutely. Yeah. And hopefully when they have more studios coming here, um, you know, the rumor mill is flying with certain right. Disney and, and some of the other guys that possibly coming in, maybe there will be more opportunity for some actors to come in and, and be sort of like they do in Atlanta. How, there's, exactly. a, there's a thriving acting community. So I see for the future, if we're able to build that up and, and these studios do come here, we'll be able to bring up this acting community to an even better height than what it is now. Like currently, if you wanna be cast in some of these studio pictures, you literally have to be in LA or pretend to be exactly. in LA to get these auditions to cast. And, and I get the stigma. like. Literally, the talent pool is huge, and you can get whatever you want from LA, and it's a four hour drive. Exactly. But you're gonna save so much more money, and you know, it's not that. It's not that crazy to think you can find a Las Vegas talent who can come in and, and, and do the day player role, do the small supporting role, and, and save you time and money to travel rather than travel somebody out here. So, uh, you know. That would be my big push for um, outside producers is like, give us a chance, like hold a casting call here in Vegas. Yeah. There, there's, I can give you a ton and ton of actors in town that are amazing and they would love to be a part of your films. Exactly, you have to look. I tell people, I mean in Vegas, you have to look, but there is really 
great talent here. Absolutely. Um, you know, Vegas does have a stigma, and I've experienced it. I'm sure you've had doing a lot of indie films in Vegas, but there are those people that deserve that chance. They work for it. We shouldn't have to live in LA with like double the rent prices and be against millions of other people doing the same thing, because along with a bigger pool means that less of an opportunity to be a part, whatever it is, on that set. Yeah. Here, if you know there's big things, chances are if you kind of dabbled in, you'll find a place or you heard about it or you know who's cast, right? Um, but I 100% agree with you and I'm truly manifesting that that will come true for us because um, since I moved here and since you moved here, you've just seen how it's just on the rise and you have this whole thought, yeah, I'm not gonna be here for long, right? I gotta get back to LA, that's where it is, right? But this is just to get my feet wet, to feel what it's like, and then all of a sudden you're like, there's stuff. Yeah. Stuff is happening, like I'm working all the time. Like that's all we can ask for, right? And then taking each day by day. So I love that and I'm, I love your energy and I love your view on film. And so I ask this question to all of my guests, and I'm sure you've probably overheard me ask the question to my former guests, but is there a philosophy that you live by? Um, I mean, something I'd love to share with the audience is, mm -hmm. you know, be an artist. So it, you don't have to be a glamorous TV star. You don't have to... Uh, be on, on the Las Vegas Strip as an entertainer, but just being an artist and inspiring other people, whether that's painting in your living room or gardening can be an art. Like find, find something artistic for yourself to do and that is so rewarding. And I feel like so many people just are depressed, they feel trapped in their lives and they don't know what to do or how to make themselves happy. And I'm like, art, Art brings happiness. So find find some some kind of art. Find your art and become an artist, even if it's never gonna see the light of day. It it truly does bring um, worthwhile life happiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that because that's yeah. so you. Yeah. I love hearing the answers. I'm always just like, it just goes hand in hand and sums up everything that you just talked about and what your passion is why you wake up and do what you do and how you are going to give back and everyone's everyone's different even though it seems like we're all the same we're not um but please tell the audience where they can see some of your acting i know you have a reel on your imdb but i'm sure some of your films your indie films are out for viewing sure absolutely uh recently uh the feature film by uh, indie film factory darkest of lies is now out on 2b tv it just released this year um, one of the lead characters in that. Uh, currently, there's a film on the film festival circuit called Grief that I produced. I am, let's see, what else is there for you guys to watch? Um, I see, there's a bunch of short films that I'm not sure. Like, I, I know there's a few films with Joey Traffy, Traffy Entertainment that are around um, that you can watch me doing on some of his trailers and stuff. Uh, currently, a few of my projects are still in post-production, so um, I can talk about them, but they're, they're still being shopped and being sold, etc., so they're not viewable. But um, if you want to see what I'm up to, just find me on social media. It's pretty easy, at Michael Forsh, pretty much across all the platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Mm. Um, you can add me on Snapchat, but I don't think I've actually used that in forever. Ah, TikTok, I'm on TikTok. Yeah. It's just goofing out. Yeah, but they can reach out to you on all those things. I'm Absolutely, sure, right? and I'm touch base. And I totally welcome you know aspiring filmmakers. If I'm aspiring actors, if you guys have any questions, I am totally open book. I try to help people as much as I can. So if you do reach out to me with questions, I try to get back to you and mm -hmm. answer as much as possible. Yeah, the main thing. And are you always open to meeting new actors? 100%. I know you have film, you know, film in the making and writing all the time. Your brain's constantly stimulated with, what story can I tell next? And I love that. But I'm sure that a lot of actors are probably asking, you, can I send you a reel? Like, what's your mm -hmm. email address? Can I send you my resume? You know? Sure, Things sure. Like yeah, people do it all the time. The Instagram, I mean, it's usually like one of those things where they, they can send it and I'm like, yeah, I'm not casting right now, but definitely look out. Mm -hmm. Usually I'll put out like what I'm looking for yeah. on the social media platforms and then feel free to submit to this place or that place. You know, uh, 
but yeah, send me your stuff. I, I, I uh, I'll take a look. I, if there's something for yeah. something in there. Yeah, amazing, Michael Forge, everyone. <laughs> Prominent, everything about art, film, and the like, and here in Las Vegas, he's one of the people that I always talk about. Where you know you have to find them. There are great people out there who are doing it for the craft, for the passion of the art, and just taking it day by day and inspiring others like myself and I'm sure everybody in this room and all the viewers back at home. So everyone, please look out for him, search him, Google him like I did, and he's going to pop right back up <laughs> for you to learn everything about him. And, you know, his story is absolutely amazing and I love his energy and how inspiring he is by art and how inspiring he is to artists. So, Michael Forrest, everyone, thank you so much for being on the hot seat. When we come back, as you know, I'm never done talking because that's all I do. So I will see you guys after the break, so don't go anywhere. Come with me now. Come with me now. Looky, looky. I've got Hooky. Tyra. But shouldn't we just kill her? No. Tie her up. I just got back from my trip. I have the greatest story for you. Looks like it's you and me, Hook. You wanna play? Let's play. about it, but since I'm in pretty tight with Ray, I usually know what's going on. Oh, right, right, right. I think I got it in the bag, too. Oh, don't want to jinx it, though. All right, Kyle, I'll see you in the meeting. Hey, Ray? Yeah, I was just thinking about my new office and... Oh, sorry, was I interrupting? Oh, no, no, of course not. Oh, okay. Oh, have you met Alan here? Uh, no, I haven't. Are you new? I've been here for five years. Oh, that's great. Welcome aboard. Talk to you later. <laughs> Isn't he the greatest? Shout, shout.